Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have kind of a viewer request video for you where I'm going to be showing you how to do two things with Spark that are common for almost every data engineer that's using Spark. Number one, doing a backfill job. So I'm gonna show you how you can backfill missing values, uh, have a placeholder, most recent timestamp, uh, and also apply business logic to decide on what the backfilling strategy will be for each column. So you can kind of see a more nuanced approach to handling missing data, uh, not just, you know, bulk replacing everything with a null value and saying that that's good enough for a backfill. Here, we're gonna look at what the data is supposed to contain. Uh, I'm gonna sh just show you how to quick create a dummy data set um, and then apply that business logic to it. The next script I'm gonna show you after that is a cleanup job. Um, so showing you how you can clean up uh, after an ETL process, uh, filtering out any, you know, in all, any bad records. Um, and again, showing you how to build in the business logic uh, for that. So. Without further ado, let's create a new Spark file and let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do, create a new file. So here we're just going to call this backfill spark.py. Um, and again, if, you, if you're looking for information on how to run Spark locally, how to do this all locally or run these actual scripts, uh, please go check out my other videos on how to set up Spark. Uh, but what we'll do here is assuming you've already set those up, let's import some packages. Um, so you're going to have to import PySpark SQL, Spark Session, uh, and then we're also going to import a variety of different uh, SQL functions here from PySpark. So when, column, lit, mean, median, first, all different different ways of how we're gonna interact with data and you'll see what each of them does. I'm sure you can guess by the name, that's why I'm not going through them piece by piece, but just so you kind of have an understanding of why we're bringing them in. Um, and then we're also going to bring in a PySpark window um, and that is going to allow us to kind of create window data sets uh, just looking at then also importing the classic date time. Um, and then what we'll do is just create a new Spark session. Um, so as you all know, whenever you want to interact with Spark, you're going to need to create a session, top of that script. So we'll just call this uh, advanced detail bat filling dot get or create. And then we're going to write our generate dummy data function. So here we're going to define generate dummy data. And then the code here, and you'll see this function here, is we're basically just going to take the current time based on date time equals now and then go through uh, user ID, I um, basically just go and create a bunch of different dummy users uh, based on and uh, with a random score and also whatever the uh, last login is. So in this time, we're just saying current time minus date time time delta, I divided by three for I in range one and 101. So this is gonna create a hundred different users uh, user IDs one through 100 um, with just kind of dynamically using these division methods where we're dividing I by 15 or 10 or uh, whatever to get the activity score um, and last login numbers just so we can kind of mimic real user behaviors. Uh, but again, you know, this is all just dummy data, but I always like using just kind of including the data in the script so you know exactly what data we're, we're interacting with. Then what we'll do is create a data frame with that dummy data. So here, data, uh, generate dummy data, just calling that function, and then uh, creating a data frame with that dummy data that we just created. Um, so now we have our data, um, and you know, just adding kind of a show here to check, hey, the original data frame looks like this. Then we'll define our different backfilling strategies. So what we're going to do is define all the different strategies, and then we'll apply them downstream. Um, so here we're going to look at uh, backfilling the categorical column. Um, and so what this is going to do is fill in missing values in categorical columns with a placeholder. So within this, if I add this code here, you'll see we have return, just it, all it is is starting with a return statement um, and then data frame with columns. So creating a new data frame off of our original one uh, where we are replacing any null value. So when column name is null, uh, then we are going to put a placeholder um, which is going to be placeholder unknown. Um, otherwise, the column will be uh, just whatever the, uh, whatever the actual name is. Just making sure we don't have any null values within our categorical columns. The next function we will have is uh, backfilling numerical columns with the mean. So in this case, let's say you know there's just some there's some empty values uh, in a numeric column and you just want to say hey for those users well, let's just assume they're right on average they're using the mean amount of uh you know our uh, of our product or our score our activity here um, and so for those we're going to backfill a numeric column um, where we're going to basically say hey uh use our mean to just replace whatever uh if there's ever a null value um, so here collect zero uh, alias mean 
Um, and then this is just getting whatever the mean value is. So selecting mean value uh, for all the numbers within that column. And then what we're going to do here is just say, hey, when your column is null, uh, then we are going to uh, insert using the slit um, the mean value. And so you can see here, uh, this, is, this lit is just referring to adding a new column to a data frame that's already been created uh, by assigning it a constant, which in this case is going to be the mean value. The next backfill operation I want to do is uh, similar to this, just backfilling with the median instead of the mean. Uh, so here, this might be ro more robust for outliers. You know, with the mean, you could easily get pulled in one way or the other if you have you know a couple of really extreme outliers. So the median just takes the bog middle, uh, you know, out of 100 users, it takes number 50, um, and it will return their value and save it in the exact same way um, that we did it for the mean value, just getting the uh, median value slightly different by this approx quantile, um, and then just passing this 0 0.5 to get the uh, actual median value for this particular data set. Um, and so that's how you do that. And then final one is going to be filling missing date values with the most recent non-null timestamp in the column. Um, so here we're doing a saying, hey, you know, if there isn't a timestamp, let's just assume it was just created and was probably equivalent to the last uh, timestamp available within the data set. So here we are using that window to uh, create kind of a sub data frame of our data set. That's what this window does, ordering it by column name, uh, descending order. And then we're saying the most recent value uh, within the uh, column name, which will be, uh, you know, when we pass it in, will be the uh, last login column. And you'll see we're going to pass, so that's why the column name we're passing in individually to each of these. This is just so you can change the column if you need to, just to kind of note there because I realize that might not be clear. Um, and so here we're just saying, hey, using this window data frame, collect the most recent uh, entry uh, for activity or last logged in and then replace again any null values using a very similar function just saying hey insert that most recent value into that column in the place of any instances where you have a null or, or non uh, valid value there then to actually apply them what we'll do is just initialize a few different setups here where df backfilling the categorical column the numerical column with the mean and the uh, date column with the most recent, or we have you know, date, data frame and last login here. And then we will also just print the data frame after backfilling and stop out Spark session once it is done. So here, print data frame after backfilling, just df.show, and then spark.stop. And there you have it. That's a few different ways of how you can backfill and interact uh, with your data set as part of an ETL process. So now that you know how to backfill, how can we do some cleanup operations? Um, so this is kind of a, almost a counterparty to backfill. That's why they're in the same video uh, saying, hey, instead of you know trying to backfill or, or you know, like insert values in here, let's just clean up any other information. Let's delete any null values. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna show you here using some more uh, business logic. So maybe it's not just a null values. Maybe you want to delete any children that are in your data set uh, because you've got to comply with, with child protection laws. Uh, so that's what we're gonna go into next. So. To do this, we'll just do is clean up spark.py. Um, and then similarly to the last one, we're going to import uh, spark session and functions. Um, so here are functions as F. Uh, this will allow us to define functions within Spark, just kind of a different way of interacting. Um, and then we're also going to import some different PySpark uh, sub libraries. So string type, integer type, and date type. So we can change and interact with different data types and import date time again, because we'll always, we're gonna use date time to create dummy data, uh, similarly to how we did in the previous example. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is again, initialize our Spark session builder. So we can create a new session for this uh, data cleanup operations. Then we are going to use a similar function just for generating that dummy data. So I won't stay too much time on this, but essentially, again, using the similar format of I for user ID, um, and then using it to populate, you know, user I, email example, uh, their age, sign up date, and score. Um, again, just similar kind of functions here to introduce some variability in the actual values within this data set. Then we're going to just generate a data frame with that complex dummy data, similar to how we did before. Uh, run a print statement and a show just to check the original data frame. Um, and then the first data frame cleanup operation we're going to do is just dropping any duplicate records. Um, so here, df drop, drop, drop duplicates, uh, user ID and email. So we don't have any duplicate users or emails. 
Uh, then what we're going to do is filter out any records that have invalid age values. So anything that is null or less than zero, uh, we're going to want to delete because no one is Benjamin Button in real life, unfortunately. Uh, and any null values, obviously, you want to get rid of those. Then we're also going to standardize email format to lowercase. So making sure that all of our emails are in full lowercase format, uh, just so that we have common data and we don't screw anything up by having certain uh, emails in, in uppercase and some in lowercase. Then next step, we're going to uh, correct status. So we only want active or inactive statuses. And if we get another type of status, we're just gonna change that to actually be active. Um, and then what we'll do is here, um, we are going to then uh, just basically check the score. Um, so increase the score by 10%. So if a user is active, we're going to increase their user usability score uh, by 10%. So we're going to multiply their score column by 1.1. Uh, otherwise, you just leave it as the uh, score, uh, initial score. Um, this is great if you want to do things like, hey, based on a certain field or column that I want that to influence another. So, you know, lead attribution, this would be a good function for. Um, and then cleanup operation uh, number six, we're actually going to add a new column and group uh, our users based on age. So here, find age group age, age is less than 18, return minor, it's over 65 or under 65, uh, then return adult, and otherwise return uh, senior. Then we're just going to register a uh, data frame that has uh, age group in it. So here, running in user data frame, passing in our data frame, um, and just making sure that it, it is uh, going to use the string type. Um, and then we're going to add it or create a new data frame with that column added using that age group uh, column to, or that age group values to actually populate it. Um, then finally, we're going to sort our records by sign up date for better readability, get the most recent dates first, and then display our data frame after cleanup operations. And then after that, we just stop the Spark session and we are all good. And so now Tossie's in a Jupyter notebook and is running them. So here we're running the backfilling job. Um, so here you can see our initial data frame here. So last login score, user ID, just being generated automatically as well as the activity. And then you can see our data frame after backfilling and all the changes we actually made. Um, so you can see the score standardized, user ID, uh, last login, any null values being filled. Um, so you have unknown instead of null. Uh, and just generally a, a nice cleaner look at that data set. Now to test it out for cleanup spark, let's just, I'm just gonna copy and paste this in as well. Um, so here, what we'll do is just stop and then run it again. So here, we're going to run the Spark data frame again. Uh, here, just age, email, score, and you can see kind of the uh, dummy data that's been generated here. And then you can also see our data frame after your cleanup operations. Um, so here, again, you can see, you know, null values been taken care of, sign up date being uh, filled in if there were any null values. Um, and yeah, just a really, really useful uh, couple of scripts learned and just like methodologies for, you know, making sure you have programs to manage uh, what happens when your data isn't in a nice, pretty format. Um, so I hope you've found this, these scripts useful. I hope you uh, have fun implementing them in your own uh, use case. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.